So let's talk about a final implication of the interaction between testing domains and trust relationships between different entities. So let's say we have some sort of an interface here, and on both sides of it, we have people we trust. Here's me, here are some of my teammates. And so the question we have to ask is, can I trust my teammates, and can my teammates trust me to always generate inputs when using the various APIs that remain within the domain of those inputs? And of course the answer is generally no. In fact, I probably can't even trust myself to always generate inputs that are within the, um, within the domain of acceptable inputs for APIs. And so what this brings us to is the idea of defensive coding, that is to say, error checking for its own sake to detect internal inconsistencies. And this is something that we'll get to a little bit later during this unit. So overall, testing software by calling into the APIs that it provides is fairly straightforward. We just make calls into the API and look at the results. But something inconvenient about real software is, is that software doesn't just provide APIs, it also uses them. What I mean here is that the software under test is going to be issuing calls into libraries and getting return values into the operating system and into virtual machines, such as the Python runtime. And so let's take, for example, just for the next couple of minutes, the idea that the software under test is something like a web browser. Now one, one thing we can do is test the web browser using the APIs that it provides, that is to say, using, using its graphical user interface, and not worry about testing it with respect to the APIs that it uses. And so what kind of APIs is the web browser using? Well, for one thing, it's talking to the network, it's talking to the hard disk through the operating system, it's talking to all sorts of lower level interfaces. And sometimes those APIs don't act as we would expect. And just as a simple example, let's take the case where our web browser is storing cookies. Here I'm trying to draw a chocolate chip cookie, storing cookies onto the hard drive of the local computer. Most of the time during testing, we expect the storage and retrieval of cookies to operate perfectly normally. But what happens if, for example, the hard disk is full when the web browser tries to store a cookie? Does the web browser crash? Does it mangle its internal state in some fashion and become impossible to use? Or does it gracefully stop storing cookies for that session and, for example, wait until there's more disk space free before it starts to store cookies again? Well, of course, we'd like our web browser to do the right thing, whatever it is. But on the other hand, we need to actually test this. If we just hope that the software does the right thing, then one of the golden rules of testing is, we shouldn't ever just hope that it does something. We need, to, we, need to actually, we need to actually check this. So the problem is that we have this fairly awkward problem where we don't actually control how the operating system responds to calls that we make. And but what, I, what I mean by that is, the awkward thing here is that we don't actually have direct control over how the operating system responds to calls that we make. So we can't easily just make storage of a cookie file fail. Rather, we would have to do something like create a full disk partition, arrange for our web browser to store cookies there, and then see how it responds. And so in this particular case, creating a full disk partition is awkward, but we could do it. But there are plenty of cases where lower level software has failure modes that we really can't easily simulate, regardless of how hard we work. So what we're going to do now is go back to our friend, the Unix read system call. Let's take another quick look at the Unix read system call. And so, this is how Unix processes read from files. And so, of course, real Unix programs are issuing calls to read constantly, maybe hundreds of times per second. And so earlier, we were concerned with the domain of the read system call. That is to say, the set of possible valid arguments to the read system call. And now we're concerned with the range. Because now we're not testing the Unix operating system anymore. We're testing a program that runs on top of the Unix operating system. And so it's the response of the operating system back to the process that concerns us here. What we can see here is that read returns the number of bytes read from the file. But there's an interesting fact here that read is allowed to read less bytes than you actually asked for. So it's going to return some number between zero and count, but we don't know what number it's going to return. Another thing that read can do is just fail outright. That is to say, it can return minus one to the, to, to the application, but it turns out that there are a whole lot of different reasons for that kind of a failure. We can see here that there are at least nine different error conditions that read can return. We have E again, E would block, E bad F, E fault, et cetera. And the point is, for the application that's calling read, the operating system can return any of these values. And these values aren't all semantically equivalent. The application might have to do different things depending on which of these values it gets. And the point is, it might be very hard as people testing the web browser to actually make the operating system read call return all of those different values. And until we've tested it with all those different values, we're left with software whose behavior we, don't, we probably don't understand, and therefore it's software that hasn't been tested very well. And so I'd like to tell you that there's some really great solution to this problem, but there really isn't. 
And the fact is, is that a lot of real programs that run on operating systems aren't prepared for some of these odder, stranger responses that the operating systems can deliver. And consequently, when those things happen, the software malfunctions.